Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the 2020 Toyota 4Runner. Now this is the Venture Edition, kind of a special graphics package along with a few subtle TRD upgrades without going to a full TRD package. So you got these gray TRD wheels. For those of you who don't know, TRD is Toyota Racing Development. You've got this Yakima roof rack as well. So for those who aren't just watching this video because they love looking at 4Runners and they're actually researching this car and don't know too much about it, this is Toyota's rough and rugged off-roadish mid-size SUV. So it sort of slots in between the Highlander and the RAV4, but with more off-road chops and less on-road civility. So it does have some cool party pieces, but you really shouldn't be considering this vehicle if you want something it's really just going to be a daily driver and you're not going to be using it much off-road. Let's take a look back here. It's got this cool feature where this whole tray slides out and you're supposed to use it for lifting things like maybe a heavy gas can, heavy bags of whatever you're dealing with. You can lift it straight up, squat with your legs, not your back, plop it on here and then when you're all loaded up, like this, slide it back into place. That way you don't have to reach way over this platform here. This platform is actually kind of cool because even though it's sort of dirty, you could sit on it, sit on the back, or you can actually pull this out and sit on it technically too, because it is good for up to 440 pounds. So you can pop a squat, sit back here, watch a football game or something, or I don't know, fireworks maybe. <laughs> watch your buddies get stuck in the mud. It's got this sort of mat you can take out, which I'm pretty sure is an optional accessory as well but then you got a nice carpeted surface here so if you were to slide that back into place then you just got a nice good carpeted surface it's back on here got a few other party pieces in the back you've got your metal tie downs there you've got some storage containers they're all hard plastic no rubberized surfaces so everything's going to slide around make a bunch of noise but it's nice to see them. You also have a 400 watt, 120 volt outlet right there if you wanted to run some accessories. And this is kind of cool. You can come in the back to fold the second row of the Forerunner. You pull this here. Then with that up, press this button, that, and it's got this perfect little cutout for the headrest. And then you've got this nice flat load floor and you've even got a little piece of rubber right here that keeps things from falling in this crack, makes for a nice, perfectly flat floor. Now let's do the, uh, let's fold this one down and do the lay down test. Let's see if you could successfully sleep in the Forerunner. You'd want to take that plastic thing out, that's for sure. So I am five foot ten, and I am well, maybe gonna fit. Let's see. My butt's gonna be right on this rubber mat. No, I think my feet are sticking out just a tad. Let's find out actually. Let's grab this. This is harder to do than you think with the camera. All right, let's feet are up against the back. And my head is hitting the seat, so I would have to lay diagonally, and then I fit. So if you were about max or so of six feet tall, you could sleep diagonally in the back of the Forerunner. It's decently comfortable, since these seats are totally flat. Let's just climb out this way here. Now, are these 60-40 fold, or are they 50-50? I think you can actually fold the center seat down separately. Yep. So it's actually 20, 40, 20, 40, 40 folding here, or technically 40, 20, 40. So you could do that. Or let's see, can you put that down and then this? Probably can. There. So if for some reason you needed to get in the back 
or you had to put something along in here like some skis or some, I don't know, two by fours or something, you could have these two seats up and it's sticking straight out there. That's, that's, that's pretty nice. Also in the back, you've got this nice big center folding armrest with some grippy removable cup holder inserts there, nice padding. Got this kind of cool red stitching on the Venture Edition. I like that better than I like the all gray and black exterior. Also got two 2.1 amp USB-A ports. Nice to see, nice rubberized floor mat in here. Some cup holders in the door, grab handles. Headroom and legroom is fine. I can't recline the seat, but it's pretty squishy. It's got a decent recline to it already. Knee room's great. Headroom's, yeah, no, I'm fine. Sometimes I just have to tell the camera. All right. A little bit dirty back here. On to the front. Pretty standard fare up here. It is kind of a cool blend between rugged and usable. The seats are very comfortable. A lot of it's, like the steering wheel is pretty standard fare 2020 Toyota. But these knobs, buttons up here are all very chunky, very easy to use. Very straightforward. You've got a little bit of storage right here, although these are both hard plastic, things are gonna rattle. You've got your old school, manual shiftable, all wheel drive, four wheel drive technically there. Low range and everything. Single stage center console, 12 volt outlet in there. Let's put this back up front, cup holder insert. You do have some carpeting down there, that's nice to see. Heated seats. So I actually want to put it in accessory mode real quick so I can show you one thing. Forerunner, if for those of you who don't know, has a window that goes back on the back tailgate. So, come around the back. We can stick our hands right through here and put the window up and down there. It's nice for some airflow. It's also nice to be able to stick things out the back, hang out the back, whatever you want to do. So, let's take a quick look at the window sticker here, also known as the Monroney. Like I said, this is the Venture Special Edition. It's coming in at a whopping $49,000. The only options on this one are the dynamic suspension, some running boards, moonroof, carpet, floor mats, and cargo mat, door edge guards, the TRD Pro exhaust, which surprisingly only costs, oh wait, no, $800. <laughs> I was reading it a little wrong there and the sliding rear cargo deck, which we saw. There's also an underfloor storage compartment back there. And like I said at the beginning, fuel economy, 16 city, 19 highway from just a three, or sorry, a four liter V6. 270 horsepower, 278 pound-feet of torque, five-speed automatic transmission. So it really starts to beg the question, should you just get the Lexus GX, get all that luxury and a V8? Let's find out. Take a quick listen to that TRD exhaust. Talk about that more in a little bit. The well, Forerunner has existed in more or less its current form for a long time. It's got a pretty old powertrain, transmission, a very tried and true formula that Toyota kind of just keeps pumping out and somehow people keep buying them. I was a little excited to spend some seat time in this when it showed up a week ago, but I've kind of been waiting for it to wow me and it still never really has happened. There's kind of four different ways driving a new test car could go. You're either excited and it lives up to its expectations. You're not excited and, and you don't really get the vehicle at first and then it never does. You're like, yeah, okay, yeah, I, I am ready to get rid of this vehicle. You can be excited and then sort of be disappointed by the end. Or you can be lukewarm at the beginning and then warm up to the vehicle by the end of the loan. 
few examples of that one were the Lexus GX that we had. At first I was like, eh, this car is weird, it's ugly, I don't really care for it, it's expensive. And then after a week I'm like, okay, I kind of get it. I, 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 I like this car, I would seriously consider it. And then there's other ones like, I don't know, Mer something from Mercedes or BMW. Um, BMW 8 Series. It's like, okay, yeah, that's going to be an awesome car. And it was an awesome car. Or the Honda Civic Si. It's like, yeah, I'm excited. And then it was great the whole time. No big surprises. Or like the Volvos, for example, V60s. It's like, oh, yeah, this is going to be a great car day in, day out. But this 4Runner, I was, I was excited at the beginning. And then, I don't know, I've just been kind of disappointed. I'm like, like I'm ready, ready to give the car back. There's nothing really obscenely bad about it. It's just, there's a lot of hype around this vehicle in a lot of auto enthusiast circles. And I, I guess it's just not really for me. Especially new. I could see more buying one used. They're super reliable. They're gonna hold up really well. They're very capable in a lot of different situations. And if you're gonna be going off-road often, I can, I can see that. I see the appeal to getting the good suspension, Hitting the stout powertrain, but for just if you're going to be daily driving this car and you're really not going to be doing much off-roading, I can't recommend it. It's loud, especially with this TRD Pro exhaust. Oh my gosh, it doesn't sound good. It sounds like sort of cool, like somebody put an aftermarket exhaust on there. But it's just droney on the highway. It's droney on 60 mile an hour roads. The turn signal here doesn't have a lane change function, so you have to hold it down to get your three clicks. The infotainment system works fine, but compared to a lot of its contemporaries, it's dated. You're paying $49,000 for this model, and you only have the eight-speaker sound system, which if you'd like to see more, we've got a link to our sound system review in the description here. It's decent for a standard system, but for a $49,000 car, you're kind of like, eh, you could get a good amount better. Let's see here. Let's get some... Get some hustle into it. We're gonna take a right here and do a little bit of off-roading. So this is where the Forerunner shines, obviously. I mean, it takes these bumps super well. I could just cruise down this two track here at 40 or 50 miles per hour with, and this isn't even the TRD package or anything, and I know that it would absorb the bumps really well. I mean, the steering never gets upset, just cruises right through. And for that, it's really good. So if you're someone who lived, maybe you went to a, a cabin regularly and you needed to go down a dirt road, and like, I'm not talking just like normal dirt roads, I'm talking like two tracky type dirt roads like this, then I could see you buying a 4Runner. But there's also other good options like Subaru Outback, most larger SUVs with some ground clearance. Let's kind of get it a little muddy here. This is a very mild off-road section, but just kind of shows you that the 4Runner could cruise through it absolutely no problem. We've got plenty of ground clearance, plenty of um, approach angle, totally fine. And the steering, what I like about it is not getting jerked around or anything. It's just very confident, smooth, right through all that sort of off-road mumbo jumbo. Then you get back on road here and you're kind of just like, eh, eh. <laughs> I sort of described this car as a very large side-by-side -side earlier. It's, it really feels like more of a toy than an actual commuter vehicle. And what really hit that home is I helped Chris over at the Topher film a comparison video between this and his personal Lexus GX460. I know I keep coming back to that car, but he you can buy a Lexus GX for mid 50s. So about seven grand more than this 4Runner. And you're getting tons of really luxurious features, much, much better riding suspension, you do have to put premium fuel in it and some of your parts are gonna be a little bit more expensive, but I just feel like you're getting so much more for your money and it's a much better commuter vehicle. Oh my goodness. 
yeah, that didn't feel great. <laughs> Definitely had uh, you see a little bit. It sort of went to one side and then went to the other, and there was a little bit of unbroken pavement there. But when you're making emergency stops, you're not always going to be on exactly smooth pavement. And the car just—I mean, it did it. Don't get me wrong; it's not unsafe, but. I would much rather be in a RAV4 or a Highlander. Let's talk a bit about that exhaust. Just listen as I take off from this corner. It doesn't sound fantastic. Let's get up on the highway here and hear what the Forerunner sounds like at speed. You do have adaptive cruise control, which is nice to see in the 4Runner. And a lane keeping assist as well. I can't remember if it's passive or active. Let's see what happens here on this corner. You can hear a decent amount of road noise and that exhaust drone, which is really frustrating. Yep. Not an active lane keep system, just beeps at you to let you know that you're going out of your lane. So again, nothing here in the Forerunner is egregious or so bad that like you shouldn't be buying this vehicle. I mean, this is a very competent car. It's a tested formula, been out for a long time. You know what you're getting. It's just not for me. I just don't care for sort of the, the off-road chops, but sort of being intended for an on-road vehicle. I'm not a huge fan of the looks either. It's just kind of, I don't know, it's, it's like overly masculinated to me. It just kind of looks like it's trying to be super aggressive and and grr, I'm tough, I'm a forerunner, you can drive me and be manly. Whereas something like a Jeep or Toyota's old FJ Cruiser, much more honest, just approachable appearance. It's like, hey man, we're just here to have a good time and you can off-road me or you can drive me on the road. I'm pretty bad on road, but like, I don't care. Like, let's go have fun. The forerunner is just, it's taking itself so seriously. Now, I know I'm going to get blasted by Toyota Bros. You're, oh, you didn't even take the 4Runner off-road. I mean, that's not what it's intended for at all. Blah, 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 blah. I know. I get it. I didn't. We don't have any sort of those roads around here in Michigan. I'd have to go to a specific off-road park to even push this thing remotely close to its potential. But how many people do you know that buy 4Runners or these type of off-roady vehicles just to drive them around the mall parking lot, just to daily commute in them? So for that sort of buy, I just don't get it. I can't... I can't empathize and I can't recommend. And if I were in this market for sort of a off-road type of vehicle, I would just get a Jeep. It's, I know this thing's just about as capable as a Jeep in most situations and much more reliable. And I know that's just kind of personal bias, but hey, it's my channel. <laughs> I just think the Jeep's cooler. Maybe, maybe some of you can convince me differently Tell me sort of the, the merits of the 4Runner that I'm missing out on and, and how great it is. But I could definitely see buying one used and just sort of driving it for what it's worth. But used prices are expensive as well. So, I don't know. There are better options in my book unless you're looking for a toy. Unless you're looking for a car that's specifically used for off-roading and maybe as a second or third vehicle. But if you're going to be commuting... Pick something different.
This is one thing that will never let you down. Toyota's four liter V6. Even if it gets horrendous fuel economy, parts are accessible and repairs are easy and probably won't have to do any anyway. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you didn't, go ahead and yell at me in the comments. I can take it. If you want to see more on the 4Runner, check out our sound system review. It actually fares decently well for what it is. If you liked the video, hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a bunch. Check out some of our other vehicles. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor. Drive on.